going on YouTube? Clover Bills here back with another Scarlet Violet video and today we're going to be looking at the Hisuian Samurott. Again, another one of the new options that we're getting uh, in Regulation C from the uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet update. And again, this is another tier sub request from another viewer. Actually, a couple of viewers have wanted this one. So I just finally decided to, you know, try and feature it just a little bit and just give you guys some ideas as to what I think could be relatively solid to start off with. But um, Samurott is not as, you know, easy to play as some of the other options, right? You know, it's going to take up your water slot. So that means you're not running um, this guy, the Urshifu Rapid Strike. And uh, we could talk about this at the end of the video, whereas like, you know, do you want the Urshifu over something like this? I'm not going to tell you the answer to that now. I'm going to wait, make you watch the entire video until you can, you know, get to the end where I give my final thoughts. But uh, at the very least, you know, Samurott has some niche within the, the metagame at the moment. And uh, if you look at its stats here, again, base 90 HP, um, decent bulk, 80 defense, and then special defense, not great, 65. And the problem here is actually the dark typing. Whereas like if this was just like regular t water, like the regular Samurott, which is okay, um, then it's not too bad. But then the dark typing actually makes things a little bit worse. Okay, because now you have to consider the, the, me the main weaknesses uh, that are running around in the metagame and that's of course the Fluttermane. You know, if you're weak to this thing, you've got problems. You're almost all like implied to like change your Terra, of course, just to survive this thing. Uh, and then you're also weak to fighting types. So you're weak to stuff like this where um, you have another Urshifu, right? So if they have another Urshifu, you know, close combat, this thing is not living. You can maybe EV to live it a little bit. Um, there's a shot, but at the end of the day, like, is it really worth it? <laughs> Um, and then from there, you know, just consider like some other options like to an extent you're also weak to these guys uh, With the Rillaboom and even like the Iron Hands, right? Uh, and things get more interesting when you just consider other things that uh, can do well against the Samurott um, Even like bug type coverage, uh, you know, is interesting here So even something like Cleaver could be a uh, good check to Samurott But like you just have to watch out for a lot of these options um, and just make sure you have checks to them because this dark typing is not that great okay that's the first thing i want to point out to you guys if you want to try and use this thing but there and then also at the same time like this special defense 65 like can you ev this with an assault vest to be able to take a you know at least a modest 116 flutter main moon vest you can you just need quite a bit of investment and i'm going to show you two different builds one that has an assault vest where like we're going with the bulky variant of samurott and then another one is a little bit more of an aggressive one with a life orb. Uh, and I've got two more or less similar squads that can utilize both of these options. So stay tuned. Um, but at the very least, I do want to start off with an assault vest variant because at the very least, that'll give us a decent amount of survivability, right? Um, where we can add on some special defense here just to try and live certain attacks. Um, but if you look at the ability against sharpness, so like you know, your slicing moves are multiplied by 1.5. So now if you just consider something like CISA Sedge, one of its, you know, main trademark moves, uh, it's going to get a nice little boost. Now it, it does get the ability to, you know, set hazards, which is one of the main selling points of Hisuian Samurai. That's one thing that Urshifu Rapid Strike cannot do. Uh, and then at the same time, you know, with your dark typing, you do have a little bit of an edge against the Cresselia. Unless they go for Terra Fairy, then you have to, you know, do something else, right? But at the very least, with the Ceaseless Edge, you, you do have a niche into that. Um, you also get access to something like, you know, Aqua Jet for, you know, a priority move. It's not a sharpness boosted ability, but again, um, it's still a good priority move, especially if you compare this with something like Chen Pao, which we are going to do, by the way. Um, then if you just go like Aqua Cutter, which is again another, you know, move that can do, you know, quite a bit of damage and it gets boosted by sharpness. I've seen some sets with like focus energy, you know, and then just something like a focus sash. So now all of a sudden these aqua, aqua cutters are like critting like mad, of course. And then at the same time, all of these things are also, you know, get a decent chance to crit as well. So you can also do this variant. You know, I, I there was a couple of squads where, you know, that did have some top cut tournament results, uh, you know, with the uh, focus energy uh, samurai here. And I think we've got one of them already over here. Let me just show you this team over here. So basically this one, uh, no, this is the Assault Vest variant. I'm sorry. Uh, where is it? Right here. Yeah, Polaris. So Polaris here, uh, again, uh, in the Taiwan Friendly Cup 5-2 result, uh, the Hisuian Samurott was running Focus Energy. 
uh, which is interesting, right? And then it has Aqua Cutter and Night Slash, right? So Night Slash is another idea, right? Because if you just uh, consider um, what it can do, again, it's another high critical hit ratio. So you could do this. Now, the only problem I have with Hisui and Samrod on something like this is the speed, right? Which is why I guess you can run Trick Room on this. Uh, because, you know, the Hisui and Samrod, it's like, it's not fast enough to really do well on their Tailwind, but it's not slow enough for Trick Room, right? So it's in that awkward speed tier of like base 85. So it's like, yeah, this is probably why you need Sash on it. So I, I feel like on this kind of team, you know, Polaris made the correct call to go and put it on uh, more of a slower Trick Room kind of setting. But yeah, so like heading, setting, setting hazards is pretty cool, you know, depending on how you want to utilize uh, your team. But again, there's lots of different options here in terms of what you can do with uh, Hisui and Samurai. But again, I'm going to show you the Assault Vest variant first. So Ceaseless Edge, Aqua Coda. I do like Aqua Jet, you know, just like a straight up priority move. Uh, and then from here, I feel like just another relatively standard move. Like Sacred Sword is actually really, really good. Um, can bypass you know, Gudra shenanigans, right? So it gives you that idea uh, in terms of, you know, having a strong, uh, again, another move boosted by um, sharpness, right? So uh, there's that concept. And then from here, I, I'm probably just gonna make it like hyper offensive. Like there, there's no reason why I can't just do this. Like just do like Tornado's Dragonite here, because like you might as well, if you're gonna use Chan Pao, you know, to boost the damage of this guy, then you might as well do like Ch Tornado's Dragonite just to, you know, again, synergize with the Chan Pao. And then at the same time, you also get access to Rain Dance here, which, you know, you're sacrificing some of your damage uh, because we're going to be going for bulk. So at least this way you can get stronger Aqua Jets and Aqua Cutters. So, you know, there's uh, there's that idea. And then, of course, Tailwind just gives you some, you know, play in a little bit of speed control, right, uh, on your team. Uh, and then from here, you know, <clears throat> I feel like just Flutter Mage is really, really good. Um, because might as well, right? It's <laughs> it's it's Flutter Mage. It's the strongest special attack you're gonna have. Uh, you know, you know, within the format, uh, you might as well try and utilize it. Uh, I do think substitute is a really really good option on Flutter Mage at the moment, uh, and we're gonna use it again over here. And then from here, honestly, like, look, I got a Dragon type, I got a Fairy type, I've got Hisui and Samurott here. Uh, I, I'm gonna add Heatran here just for you know triple typing here with like Terra Grass. Right, so like now I have my Fire Water Grass Dragon Fairy Steel Core, and you know the thing is with with Samurott, you know you're weak to you know the Urshifu and Fluttermane, right? So this the Heatran can give you that option uh, to play against them, right? If you just have Flash Cannon and then Terra Grass, uh, so this way you can also Terrestrialize and be able to at least do something against the Urshifu. So I I, I think this is uh, relatively okay in terms of like trying to play the Samurott on a more of a hyper offensive kind of way. And you can almost just look at this, right? Um, why can't we just put Urshifu here? You can, right? You can, you absolutely can. Um, and, but the, the Samurott is just something that can also do well on this kind of team, just because of some of the options it can give you, all right? Not as fast as the Urshifu, um, arguably maybe not as hard hitting and can't go through protects with crits, um, but the hazards, you know, if I can break inner focus, I'm sorry, if I can break Dragonite multi-scale, if I can break potential focus sashes, if I can, you know, put things in range of certain things that normally maybe would not be in range um, because of the chip damage that you would get from the Ceaseless Edge, then, you know, okay, sure. Uh, at the very least, uh, I have that going for me, right? But uh, this is my like first proposal um, with something like this. I have another team uh, that I'm gonna show you within this video where we can also use like a Life Orb set, but uh, in terms of the team construction, I, I feel like this is uh, what we want with the six. So let's uh, finish it off here. Okay, so now with Chen Pao over here. So basically, um, again, very standard set with Focus Sash. Uh, and then, you know, just basically Ice Spinner, Sucker Punch, Protect, and Sacred Sword. But, but I do also want to add that this thing also gets Sucker Punch. So if you also want to go like, you know, Terra Dark, Sucker Punch. Um, let me just bring that up over here. So Terra Dark, Sucker Punch. Uh, this is also an option that you can run on the the Samurott, right? On the unless you don't want it, really want it. I do like Terra Fairy. Like you're 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 gonna be neutral against another Fairy type, and then you're able to just resist the fighting coverage in general. So you might as well, right? Um, so I digress, and I feel like this is a decent as of a Terra that you can get on this thing. But over here, I'm just gonna put Sacred Story. But if you like Sucker Punch, hey, uh, I think uh, you should totally leave it. You know what? I am gonna leave it. 
Um, no, I'm doing Sacred Sword. <laughs> All right, uh, then from here, so, you know, just basically Taunt. Uh, is, taunt is really, really nice. Uh, and then Bleak Windstone, of course, your, your stab. And Covert Cloak, Terra Ghost. Uh, you know, the, the idea here, again, is, you know, with Taunt, uh, when I was testing this team, like, I taunted so many Amoongus, they just couldn't really do anything, and they're forced to switch, right? And then when they were forced to switch, the Samurott Ceaseless Edge basically did a lot of chip damage, and then that allowed the Fluttermane and, and or my Dragonites to clean up in the end game. So, you know, just think of it in that kind of concept, where, like, you're just able to taunt things, make them switch out, right? And then they take a lot of chip damage from the, um, you know, the Ceaseless Edge, uh, the rock damage, right? So then from there, uh, you know, Dragonite choice band set, you know, nothing really, you know, exciting about it. <laughs> um, I feel like your two mainstays is of course, extreme speed and stomping tantrum. Um, you know, the ground coverage is really, really nice from Dragonite. Able to pin certain heat trans slots, good against another iron hands, good against some other steel types running around. Um, you know, just a very, very good coverage move in general. Uh, then over here, it's just really up to you how you really want to play this. You can definitely do like Outrage, of course. Uh, then you can even do like, um, you know, some other covers. Like you can even do like Iron Head, for example, right? Physical Iron Head will pick up the Fluttermane Kyo, whereas Flash Cannon will not. So you can also do that kind of route. Um, but other than that, there's a bunch of other coverage moves that Dragonite can get. I think when I was testing, I was doing like Aerial Lace and Low Kick. Okay, so, you know, you can definitely do that. Otherwise, you can definitely like do Iron Head. You know, just really all depends on how you want to use it. But yeah, this is what I was running. Um, then over here, the Flutter Main. So, you know, I do like Terra Steel. Uh, you know, Terra Water, Terra Steel. These are all like good defensive typings. Terra Fairy is also another one where you can just like, uh, again, get a little bit more damage out of your, your attacks. So if you like the more offensive slash defensive Terra type, you know, really all depends up, up to you. Either way, I'm going Booster Energy, I'm going Moonblast, I'm going Shadow Ball, I'm going Sub and Protect, right? So up to you how you want to use your, your Fluttermane, but I think uh, at the time I was just testing out Terra Steel, but this is just something else for you. This thing, so I like having a Fire type attack, Heat Wave, Flash Counter, Earth Power, and Protect. Now you can go with the leftovers here, you know, with the sub stuff, and then maybe just take out Flash Cannon, just put sub. Um, you can do this. I've also seen, by the way, Terra Bug um, on the Heat Trend. This is really good into the mirror, where like you have Heat Wave, um, Earth Power, and then like, or not even Earth Power, just do like Terra Blast, um, and then maybe have Earth Power and or sub over here. But like, to, this is really good into the mirror against another Heat Trend. So if that's something that you want to consider, or, or try and utilize and maybe in your own team building, definitely consider it. It's it's pretty decent. But other than that, um, we'll just go with the standard uh, Heatran, Terra Grass, um, you know, with the, I was going with a Life Orb set. I just wanted to be aggressive Heatran when testing, you know, just because a lot of the these players, they'll assume, you know, you are leftovers with substitute. Um, but um, in a closed team sheet on ladder, it, it does relatively well. But of course, if you're trying to play in the tournament, right, they're going to see you are Life Orbs a little bit easier to play around. But, you know, it just all depends on how do you want to use the Heat Trend. You can even just do like a double sub, you know, with Heat Trend and Fluttermane or just put sub here uh, and then just not have sub here and just go with like another coverage move on the Fluttermane. Like, you know, Dazzling Gleam, for example. Right. Um, I think that's it. Right. So we've got we've got the open team sheet kind of thing. Now let's uh, let's uh, add some EVs to this. Okay, so we'll actually just start here with these Samurai here. So basically, you know, on first glance, I'm, I'm thinking like, you look, I want to invest, you know, quite a bit of HP. I also want to put a little bit in special defense and some attack, but you know, this, this won't have too much speed. Like if anything, I could do something like this where I was going for the 191 benchmark over here. Then I was going basically something like this. Like if you just go like this, this is like, eh, then you just do this. Right, and a little bit of bulk, like maybe 107-ish, 109-ish, just to, for like some speed keep shenanigans, and then just do something like this, right? This is what I was thinking in the beginning with like this assault vest, so a little bit of a boost here, but then I was looking at some of the calcs, and I'm like, this doesn't live anything, except maybe even like a good roll for, for certain things. Like if I just put this in, look at this, like 204, and then what was my investment? Uh, I was, originally, this is what I originally was doing, right? So I was doing this, 
and then um, again assault vest, right? And I match this up into a flood. I mean, dude, th I'm still dying to moonblast, right? I still have to be forced to be able to live this, right? And then all in all, I just have to invest a lot more bulk. Uh, into my special defense where I can just get this roll. Again, this is like a modest 116 flutter main, right? If this was a sash to me, then okay, I've got some decent chances, right? But like, oh, come on, man, <laughs> right? So I went back here and I was like, you know what? This is not a terrible spread, but like, I'm pretty much forced to tear. At least let me get a little bit more bulk on my Samurai, right? So I decided, okay, let me add some bulk here. Uh, let's actually drop the attack considerably. So this will just be like a bulky hazard setter. Right, in that sense, right? So I dropped it all the way down here to like, oh man, like one, yeah, something like this, 156. And then I went for 180 special defense, right? I, w I was going for something like this. Just, I even dropped the speed a little bit. So like 204 HP investment with, with um, 180 investment. So now if you take a look at the calc, okay? Uh, now I'm able to get at least the 6.3% roll against the Moonblast. But that, that is so much investment, right? So, you know, it takes away a lot of your attack. But again, you're trying to be bulky anyway. You're not trying to like do, you're, you you got some good damage moves here with like Ceaseless Edge and then the Sharpness and then of course Chen Pao and then the Rain Dance and the Tornado. So you have some way to increase your damage. So it's not a huge loss where if you're taking away some of its attack, okay? Um, this is obviously a more bulky set. I have a Life Orb version where like I just toss the bulk out the window and just go for like more, more attack, right? But at the very least, some of this bulk did come into play. A little bit, a little bit. So I guess in that sense, be respected, but I'm still dying to urge you. So you just, I just want you to remember that, but you still have the option for Terra Fairy here, but I digress. So that was the main calc I was going for with my, my Samurott. Um, the Chien Pao, I just did this, right? Nothing else you really want to do out of your Chien Pao, just 252 set because of a Sash. The Tornadus, uh, again, you know, the same kind of Tornado set we've been using just going up to 170 actually i went to 169 here just to again outspeed the base 100s outspeed chi and zap those um depending on you know who's at max speed here but again the main idea with the the cv spread is you're surviving the you know dragonite extreme speed shenanigans without chan pao um so just keep that in mind you'll also survive urshibu surging strikes um terra water gets a little more interesting but hey um i, I digress um, Dragonite here, so basically I was just doing this, like again, Adamant Nature, I was going pretty much this route where I like, I maximized its damage, I went with this, this set, about 108, something, and then from here I just did, you know, a little bit more HP, I break my rule for optimization, but I really want more of this attack on Dragonite, so this is one of the case, the few cases where like, hey, let's break my 204 rule, let's break the EV benchmark rule, and just go max attack, right? And again, if you don't know what EV benchmarks are or EV bumps, feel free to comment in the video and I'll explain it. Every time I mention that, somebody always asks what are EV bumps, right? Because again, there's nothing in the game that tells you what are EV bumps, right? You have to go on YouTube and watch people, people like me <laughs> explain it to you. But uh, it's basically where the stat increases by two points within the natured stat. Uh, it happens at every 80 EVs. So again, you can just imagine here. So look here, here's the second benchmark. 185 to 187 so another 80 evs we'll get it to 204 this is the third benchmark and then what i'm saying now is in this case sometimes this misses uh, some of the chaos so i'm just gonna go for this right 204 flutter main bulky as it gets right we're gonna go modest nature here i'm just gonna go right here to 181 mark again this is just for the you know the outspeed the the thunderous stuff the base 111s if they're max speed you know tornadoes here you go um then uh you know just pretty much right here uh and then i just got all these evs left over here so i just pretty much dump them into like this you know a little bit you know for the substitute you always want some hp on your so on your flutter main for for the substitute right so and then just a tiny bit of bulk uh that that gets left over over here uh then from here you know heatran i just went with like a little bit more of an offensive set so i went with modest uh, I went up to 148. Okay, this will, yeah. So like, I just wanted to outspeed certain Dragonites and then I just didn't want to speed tie it. So I did this, you know, second bump here in the modest nature, 156. So I just want my Heatran to do a little bit of damage, right? And then I just added the HP for the optimal number for the Life Orb chip damage, right? So you always want to end in a nine with the Life Orb. 
Okay, so then from here, this is pretty much it. This is what I was using, you know, in the beginning to test. And then I made a change here. Uh, later on, I actually switched out the Heatran um, and then put something else here and put the Life Orb over here, just like a, as another uh, variant. But this still worked out relatively well. Like you still have, you know, the big four over here with Heatran potentially, right? So it's still a team that worked. And uh, I, I got like maybe like one or two sample games where I was just using this team, right? You know, just for quick testing. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look. All right, so this one, he's got a decent rain team with the Overquill, right? I, I like Fluttermane, Iron Ironbundle, and Urshifu here. Uh, there is world champion Pachirisu here, so <laughs> there's that. You know, I'm not going to fault my opponent for, you know, trying to use a world champion Pokemon, right? But I don't think uh, this actually does anything here. So um, not a bad way to use Hisuian Samurai, in my opinion, right? So we have some options here. We can uh, do some good damage into the Iron Bundle. Um, we have, uh, we just have to have matchups for everything else. <laughs> Alright, so I just wanted to try and get up passage here. So there's the Pelipper, here's the Overwolf. So that, that's already interesting, right? I already, um, I already get a boost in the rain, so I don't have to click Rain Dance. So basically, you know, he goes for Liquidation. I survive, you know, this is a faster over. It's Life Orb, by the way. Bleak Wind Storm, trying to get a little bit of speed advantage there. And there's my Ceaseless Edge. So already I, I get some hazards down. There's the Tailwind, of course. So... I go for my own Tailwind, and then he crunches me. That's good. Um, and then I miss the Ceaseless Edge. I just want to say something, right? Remember, Ceaseless Edge has a chance to miss. Urshifu does not miss. <laughs> I just want to say that. Okay, Urshifu does not miss. So, unfortunate there. I do uh, miss, so I don't get the KO, and he KOs me in an instead, right? So, that's unfortunate. So, now I have Chin Pal here, but now Samurai looks like it could do some, some decent damage here, right? Um, I actually do a little bit of a misplay, but, you know... Other than that, I still feel like I I should have did okay. Right, so he goes for Terra Water, he goes for Helping Hand, um, and I sucker punched the Pelipper when I should have actually just did this to the Oracle, right? But the only reason I did that is, you know, actually, this now that I think about it, I should not have even done that in the first place. But anyway, um, so I do, I whiff that move, I whiff this turn, um, and he gets me down the Sash, and... You know, my Caesar Z does connect this time, so I get another set of hazards going in. Um, there's the Fluttermane. Decent chip damage. Like, look at this. It's already down to 84%. That, that is the number. Remember, if you're calcing for like 84 to 1 to 100%, the 6% the chance roll, now that actually goes within the 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 the, the KO roll, right? So remember how we do EV spreads like anywhere from 84 to 100 this is now within that territory. Now I don't have the 6.3% chance, but now I can actually KO stuff if I even get a couple of turns of hazards going. So um, I just wanted to say that in that sense, right? So, all right, so now I'm going to protect the Samurai, I, I mean the Chien Pao here. Um, and I thought the Pelipper would actually die. <laughs> it did not die. I wanted to take it, look, come on, man. I got Chien Pao in here. I have the rain. This is a stab move. I understand it's resisted, but come on. <laughs> All right. If I had a little bit more attack investment, I probably could have KO'd this thing. But this, to be fair, this Pelper probably had like good bulk on this. So unfortunate there. Um, he goes for Dazzling Game. I do live this because I am Assault Vest. He goes for Hurricane. And again, I do live that. I do live that. So my bulk actually comes into play, right? So Assault Vest doing, rel doing the job, okay? And then... I just Aqua Jet the Pelipper. Now I pick up the KO, right? So that's fair. And here's the Ice Spinner. I know I outspeeded, right? So because I have Tailwind. Um, and then that's pretty much all she wrote. Uh, he's got nothing. He just has the Water Urshifu, but he can't beat this. Um, that's already good chip damage from the Sacred Sword. He Ice Punches my Samurai. Dude, ice Punch Urshifu, bro. All right. So now I just bring in my own Fluttermane. And he can't really do much here. At the time, I was Speed Nature. He didn't even try to Aqua Jet. Not that... Um, that would have necessarily killed because I have a decent amount of bulk, but like, yeah, <laughs> um, he can only kill one because then, like, even if you Aqua Jet the Flutter, then I still have Champ over here doing doing things, right? So um, I do get up that one. So you know, the 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 the, the hazards did stuff. It, it, it did stuff. Okay, now just to show like a second variant of the squad I was using. So like I went with a Life Orb Samurai here with like Ceaseless Edge, Awkward Cutter. Um, Sacred Sword and then Aqua Jet. But what I did was I, I took this out. I still kept Aqua Jet. And then I just went... With, oops. Yeah. And then I just went with Protect over here. So again, you can argue that you can just put these, these Sucker Punch here. 
you know, for a stab boosted life orb sucker punch, you know, you could do that, right? I, I'm not against it. Um, or you can just go for Aqua Jet a little bit more consistent uh, in certain c scenarios. But like, I just went with this, like I went with a little bit more speed. You know, I went to 121 again, hitting that benchmark, you know, under Tailwind, uh, you know, j just, just, it, it's a good, well, 120 is a good uh, VGC number. Then, you know, I just want to just max this, right? Like, look at this 108 attack is like, it's okay. It's just not like super impressive, right? So, you know, just maximize this, optimize a little bit of the HP for the Life Orb chip. And then to heck with the defenses, let's just be aggressive here and let's deal some damage, right? So I went with the Life Orb Center and then I kept everything else relatively the same. Um, I still have a sub on this Flutter Main over here, but the one thing that I was doing, all right, I have low kick here because now uh, I added Iron Hands here. So I took a page out of Jalen's book and said, you know what? This is pretty much that kind of team, except now I have an Iron Hands here. So now I get fake out pressure. I can set up, um, you know, either a Tailwind situation or, you know, from here, I can even set up my hazards, you know, just fake out a threat that Hisuian Samurai doesn't want to deal with. But like, if you want to lead a fairy against the Hisuian Samurai, I can do Iron Hands with the heavy slam pressure against it, right? And now at, at the very least, I have Protect. And if you want to lead the Water Urshifu again to, against the Samurai to try and close combat here, um, I have got Iron Hands here to also like relatively deal with that as well with like Wild Charge Pressure at the same time. So I, I feel like this was also another way you can utilize this. And I just did like one quick test game. And then, you know, from there I was like, all right, this is this is fine. Okay, so this is pretty much Ursa Luna Trick Room with Cresselia and then Hisui and Gudra. Um, I do like the Enamorous and the the um, the Mousehold here. The, this is an interesting team. Um, it's definitely very Trick Room heavy, but then he has a Clawwitzer. So that's like, Another suboptimal Pokemon. I feel like if you just take this out and put, you know, maybe I I don't even know, like uh, another uh, like maybe just an Iron Hands in general, or or just put like even Annihilate here. Mousehold Annihilate is still like very very good. So there's no reason to put this thing here. Um, you have enough special attackers, right? You you got this guy. This is all you need. You don't need another one. Um, but again, uh, he's going Enamorous. He's going Cresselia, right? I figured he would do Cresselia plus Trickum Setter. Um, or like some Trick Room Sweeper. Uh, so I decided to lead the Iron Hands. So Iron Hands actually looks decent uh, in a way. Like, again, I have the Steel Pressure against the Enamorous. Um, I have, you know, and again, we talked about this in the beginning of the video. I have Ceaseless Edge for the Cresselia. If he goes Terra Fairy, then the Heavy Slam is going to be able to pick up. But at the very least, I want to utilize my speed for the time being. If he gets up Trick Room, that's okay. Um, but I don't want to take a Fairy Tank up attack right now. So I fake out the Enamorous. Ceaseless Edge, this is, this is good damage. So at the time, I actually was using a lower attack stat. I, this is not Adamant 252. This is Adamant 108. I forgot to change it when I was making the team. So like, you figured I could have gotten a little bit more damage onto the Crystal. I probably could even KO it, it, right? So, you know, from 108 to 252 is actually a decent difference. But uh, I digress. It's still good damage. Um, and I do set up my hazards. So there's the Calm Mind. He actually calls Ma. He Calm Minds, he doesn't even Trick Room. So I felt like that was a very, very interesting play he could have done. Um, but, you know, I still have the speed on my side. I whip another Ceaseless Judge. Just use Urshifu, guys. <laughs> just use Urshifu. <laughs> right, he didn't even Terra. He just said, I don't even care. All right. Um, fortunately, I do get up a Heavy Slam. He does live, right, because Enamorous is relatively bulky. But, like, I'm just, I'm just sad. It's actually weakness policy. That's actually different. All right, so, like, miss for miss. Yeah, you know what? I deserve that. I deserve that. Like, miss for miss. You might as well. It's only fair, right? So then, now he goes Terra Fairy. So that's it. Now he had Protect this whole time. He didn't Protect against the Fake Out. Um, so a little bit more Hazard damage, right, from the Ceaseless Edge. Heavy Slam. And there's the Trick Room. That's okay. That's still fine. Because now my Iron Hands is actually better. The Aqua Jet picks up. Thank you, Aqua Jet. <laughs> All right, so that's good. And then, now I'm faster than the Crest. So Heavy Slam is looking good here. So actually, the Trick Room actually helps me in this case. So he brings in Clawitzer, he brings in Gudra. And again, look at that chip damage, 84%. You know, this is a this is good, this is great chip. You know, the 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 good the uh Samurai's doing doing something here. So Ice Beam, unfortunate because he freezes me. So the Clawitzer is faster. He goes for acid armor, but again, I have Sacred Sword, so you know that's a nice acid armor, bro. Goodbye, Gudra. <laughs> oh man, and now it's pretty much all she wrote. All right, I got I got four options in the back. Aura Spill does KO me, but that's okay. Again, I have 
you know, flood main in the back even. Ice Beam, I'm bulky. I actually live, you know, and then I wake up from the freeze. I just kill this thing. Right? Just, just don't use that Pokemon, guys. <laughs> All right, but again, the hazards were able to do stuff. Iron Hands putting in work, um, you know, with the, uh, the Samurott here. So I'm glad I was able to at least use that combination, you know, right from the get-go. Okay, so again, here's the original version, the bulky Assault Vest variant uh, with four attacks. And again, Calc to survive a Moonblast from a Flutter main, your damage is going to suffer a little bit, but you have ways to increase it with Chen Pao and Tornadus. So there's that compensation here. Um, same idea, but again, I just went Assault Vest Iron Hands and then I just slapped the Life Orb on this thing, right? You might as well and then just put Protect here. You have some options in terms of flexibility in terms of what you want to replace, but like... You know, the hazards did stuff. I, I I was a little bit impressed. I was like, you know what, this is okay. Sometimes the Samurai is just hard to position, you know, depending on the matchup. But like, I just feel like Urshifu could be better here. But it works, right? I'm not I'm not saying it doesn't work because it does work, right? You know, and you know, you guys wanted a Samurai video. You wanted a Samurai team. Well, I gave you two. So, uh, yeah. And again, if it, I could have utilized like more Dragonite, Chen Pao stuff, but like, you know, Samurai was actually putting in work in, in those like sub test games, right? So you might as well uh, take a look at those. But and anyway, um, if this is something you need help with, if you're trying to do team building for Regulation D and you're just not sure where to start, uh, and if you need some guidance as to what kind of cores you want to play, you know, surrounding different Pokemon, feel free to sign up on the channel with the tier three sub. Uh, it's a team building sub. And once you do sign up, uh, you're able to message me on Discord. Uh, then we can organize a one-on-one -on -one call and we build a team from scratch. Uh, so then this way we can get you guys the team that you need uh, to start off the regulation D format. All right. Um, but if you haven't joined the Discord already, make sure you join the Discord. You know, there's a link in the video description. You know, we're already way past 600 members. So we've been uh, growing quite a bit. Um, but yeah, if any of those things are of interest to you, take a look at the video description. There is a link to join the channel. Uh, as well as join the discord there is also a link to join the channel with the tier sub in the comment section there is a pinned comment or every single video has a join now button along with a pop-up where you can just click that same idea able to join with the tier sub uh, and then we just go from there all right we'll be back with another video in the next one guys peace out and have a good one